I recently ordered a caravan to be custom built. I have a 17 year old utility truck that I intend to use as the tow vehicle for the caravan. Because the truck is so old, it does not have a rear view camera system which these days comes standard in new vehicles. When towing a caravan, it is important to have rear view cameras at the rear of the tow vehicle as well as at the rear of the caravan. So last week, I bought this rear view camera system from the company called Safety Dave. So I have a Safety Dave AHD 6 inch monitor which handles two channels for two cameras. I also bought a Safety Dave square camera and in addition I bought a Woza one channel connecting cable which comes with adapters for one channel camera. This allows me to connect between the tow vehicle and the caravan via a coil. The Wolza coil is also called a Suzy coil. It is important to assemble the complete circuit before installing to the tow vehicle and the caravan. So join me in this video as I set up my test bench, unbox the products and assemble the system to show you how I connect them. Let's start with the Safety Dave Car AHD Rear View Dash Monitor SDA HD6 Features are AHD that's analog high definition operating temperatures between plus 70 degrees Celsius to minus 20 degrees Celsius power source can be 12 volt DC or 24 volt DC specifications for this monitor are IPS screen the display resolution is 1024 by 600 pixels so it is not full high definition the brightness 400 candles per meter square aspect ratio 16 by 9 there is a on-screen display menu. The system is PAL and NTSC compatible and has a speaker. The video input it takes is two-way 1080p or 720p or CVBS or mixed camera input. So now let's unbox it and see what is inside. A black bag containing a user menu for the 6-inch HD monitor SDA HD6. This monitor takes in a maximum of two video channels V1, V2. The menu explains what's provided. Unfortunately, the user menu is very simple. Doesn't explain how you actually operate the control buttons and what you see when you press them. Other items in that bag bonus offer for the SDCM10, which is a camera system to sit above a license plate. There's also a brochure on how to set up the bench test for the system before installation. There is a pamphlet offering a 10% discount when buying the Woza Call Kit. Safety Dave also sells the Safety Tire Monitor System. Just a simple cut repeating again the discounts available on the tire pressure monitor system and on the and on an additional rear vision camera. Safety Dave also sells the hard sign defibrillator. There's a brochure providing a scan code to provide feedback. Two marketing magnets. What else is in the box? A cable loom to connect to a battery power supply as well as to connect to two separate video cameras. These look like 4-pin aviation connectors. There is also a 9-pin connector plug which joins to the monitor screen. There is a 7.5 meter 4-pin video extension cable. The cable is terminated with 4-pin aviation connectors. There is the SDAHD6 display monitor screen itself. It says the system is compatible to PAL or NTSC. Power supply 12 to 24 volt, made in China. Manufacture date 2022-11. I guess that means November. V1 and V2 video channels selection. Power button. That plastic button there is non-functional. At the back, this looks like perforation holes for two speakers. There is a suction cup mounting to mount the display monitor to the car windscreen. There is a mount with adhesive base and I slot the back of the monitor to the mount. There is also a connector cover. This can be used to cover the connector if required. There is nothing else in the box. This is the Safety Dave Square Camera. Some features are night vision capability 10 to 15 meters. You can choose between three models 
45 degree field of view, 92 degree field of view, 120 degree field of view. It has 5.9G shock rating. You can select to mirror the image. The camera sensor is 700 TVL, 2 year warranty. It has smart infrared IR card, anti glare, IP69K, and has audio capability. Let's see what's inside. That's the camera. There are four infrared emitters for night vision. The mounting bracket and the sun shade and the video cable coil. It's also a 4 pin aviation connector. I bought a second 7.5 meter 4 pin video extension cable. This is a single Woza kit. It contains one Woza cable also known as a Suzy coil and at both ends of the Woza cable are 5 pin connectors. I also have two adapter cables. These adapter cables have a oval mount to enable the adapter to be mounted to the rear of the tow vehicle or to the drawbar on the caravan. On one of the Woza adapter cables, there is a 4-pin aviation socket. On the other Woza adapter cable, there is a 4-pin adapter plug. In the box, there are also two galvanized mounting brackets. Let's start with mounting the monitor to the stand. On the back of the monitor, there is a slot and on the stand, there is a nut. Just loosen the nut slightly and then slide the nut into the slot. Tighten the nut a little. Loosen the tilt and tighten it at the angle you want. And we have the monitor on the stand. Now we need the power loom to connect to the monitor. One end has the 9 pin connector. Just make sure the slots are aligned correctly. If I hold the connectors correctly, you'll see that on the 4 o'clock and at the 8 o'clock, there are two grooves. This will make to the two on the opposite connector. Do not force it. Screw the null nut to lock it in. That's now joined. In the first test band setup, I will assume that I'm setting up to install one camera at the rear of my tow vehicle. This means I'll need a 7.5 meter 4 pin extension cable and this extension cable will run inside the car, under the car, to the back of the car and assume that the camera on the tow vehicle will be on channel 1 instead of channel 2. Make sure I align the slots correctly, push gently and they will mate. When I actually install this on the vehicle, after this is joined, I can slide the rubber sleeve over to protect it from water and dust. Now this assumes that this extension coil is running under the tow vehicle and that this end comes out where the rear of the tow vehicle is near the tow bar. In which case, I will have this safety day square camera mounted to the rear of my tow vehicle and I will need to connect the 4-pin aviation plug on this end to the socket on this end. Again, line them up correctly, push gently, and when they make, screw them in. And if I was installing this on the actual vehicle, I would slide the rubber protection over. Now, this is all connected for my tow vehicle. I just need power supply. I will use a 12-volt motorcycle battery. Black is negative, connect to the negative on the battery. I use my alligator clip and just so I don't short anything because the other end is an alligator clip, I'll clip to the other end of the negative terminal. This is the positive input cable. I use a alligator clip, connect to the positive of the battery and connect the other end of the alligator to the battery positive to avoid a short. So now all the video cables are connected. With the test bench setup completed, I will now provide power to the monitor and the cameras. Push the power button here. You'll see that the camera is capturing the image I'm pointing at and the monitor is displaying the camera view. Now let me show you how to operate the menu. Push menu once, you get the image setting screen. It disappears very fast. So you have to be very quick to choose what you want. This, the menu should actually stay there and remain there until the user chooses to exit the menu. So that's not a good feature on this monitor. Anyway, I'll push menu again and you see if I use the plus and minus, it will increase or decrease the value. I'll leave it at 50 for brightness. If I push V1 and V2, it moves it down to contrast. Again, I can choose 
plus or minus to increase or decrease the value. I'll push V1, V2 to go scroll down again, saturation, plus or minus to increase or decrease the value. For purposes of demonstration, I'll make the saturation value 60, 60. Then I'll use the V1, V2 to scroll down to reset. And if I push on plus, you see that it has reset the saturation value from 60 back to 50, which is factory default. The reset changes all settings in image setting, in general setting, in system setting, in volume setting, completely returning them all back to factory. At the bottom of image setting is the version of the firmware V220510, which I assume is 2022 10th of May. We are pushed menu again, it will go to the general settings. Channel 1 guide is on. If I press plus to toggle on or off, the same thing for that and the others. In theory, this enables the monitor to display guidelines. However, the guidelines are not available on this 6 inch monitor. I find it strange that the software has not changed to suit the monitor and that non applicable features are left on the firmware, and that is not good for a product. There's also channel 1 delay on or off, and to be frank, I still don't know what that does. On to the system setting, you can have the image upside down, or you can select channel 1 and 2 to have images mirrored. The value for VCOM DC can be changed from 0 to 40, it does nothing. Lastly, you can change the volume from 0 to 40. I've made it 0 because it's getting feedback since the uh, camera is here and the monitor is there. That's it, that's the menu. Personally, I find the menu on this monitor to be rather poor quality and not user friendly. I think there's lots of room for improvement. I'll move the camera around just to show you what it sees. As I am in a room with artificial light, the image will probably be a lot better in outdoor sunlight conditions. I will now change this test bench setup so that we assume that we're connecting to a caravan with a camera at the rear. As I only have one test camera, I'll remove this camera from channel 1 and then reuse it as a camera on the rear of the caravan to channel 2. So I'll turn the monitor off first, then I'll disconnect the camera from channel 1. This is the Wolzer adapter, 4 pin aviation plug connect to 4 pin aviation socket. Make sure that the alignment is correct, then screw it in. This Wolzer connector will be at the rear of the tow vehicle and I'll simulate this with the mounting bracket. Assume this is mounted to the rear of the tow vehicle. Now assume that this camera is mounted on the rear of the caravan and I'll have to connect this camera to a 7.5 meter extension cable. So again, join the two 4 pin aviation plug and sockets, align them correctly. Screw it in to secure. The 7.5 meter extension cable will run underneath the caravan. This end will come up at the drawbar of the caravan. I will need another Woza adapter cable. Join the two aviation plug sockets. And I'll have another Woza connector on the drawbar of the caravan and assume this represents that it's fixed to the drawbar of the caravan. When the tow vehicle is not connected to the caravan, then there is no connection between these two Wolza connectors. But when I want to tow the vehicle, I will use this Suzy coil Wolza cable. Join the two, make sure the slots are correctly lined up. Screw in to tighten. Do the same for the other side. Screw to tighten. I'll disconnect this extension cable from channel 1 and connect it to channel 2 because I don't have a second extension cable for this demonstration. Channel 2 will represent my camera from the caravan. So now in this second test bench setup, it represents I have a tow vehicle connected to a caravan which has a camera at the rear. 
So on the caravan, there's a camera on the rear. It's connected to a 7.5 meter extension cable, which connected to a Walzer adapter mounted to the drawbar on the caravan. And between the caravan and the rear of the tow vehicle, there is a Suzy Koi Walzer. And on the rear of the tow vehicle is another Walzer adapter cable, which is connected to a 7.5 meter extension cable under the tow vehicle, which then connects to the power loom and finally connected to the display monitor. So let me turn the power on the monitor to see what it shows. With the monitor on, it's gone by default to channel 1. It says no signal because my channel 1 cable doesn't have a camera. I will select channel 2, which is the camera on the rear of the caravan. Here we are with channel 2, you can see that it's picking up the camera on the rear of the caravan. Well I do hope you found this video of the test bench setup useful. Very important to test the setup on a test bench before you physically install it on your vehicle or caravan. Just to make sure it works because there could be faulty cable or faulty camera or display monitor and it's better to find that out early uh, and then get them replaced rather than after you install it. Do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more and to help the channel grow. Thank you so much.